for today's quick shot of Sips, Suds, and Smokes. Hey everyone, welcome to another Suds podcast episode where everything good in life is worth discussing. I'm your hostess, good old gal Juliana, and with me today is good old boy Dave. Cashew Almond Macadamia. Gizm tight. Excuse me? What's that all about? I didn't have a sound bite ready, so I just went nuts. Uh, wow. This is going to be a great episode, isn't it? I don't think we'd know a great episode if it fell on us. <laughs> okay, Optimist. Well, Prime. well, I'm excited about this episode because we're going to be tasting and discussing three beers from New Park Brewing in West Hartford, Connecticut. West Side. Exactly. My kind of place. But first. This episode of Sip, Suds, and Smokes is sponsored by Dollar Shave Club, your destination for cleaning this spring. Get in touch with making you more affordable with great products available at dollarshaveclub.com slash sips. So the beers we'll be discussing, ooh, my voice cracked a little bit. Someone's going through a change. <clears throat> the beers we'll be discussing today from New Park Brewing in West Hartford, Connecticut. Foliation American Pale Ale. It's 5% ABV. Hoppyary is an 8% American double IPA, or DIPA, as we call it. And Laurel is another 8% American DIPA. We will be rating these beers today from 1 to 5, with 1 being whew, how this episode is going, and 5 being really great. Julie, to you. Aw, thanks. So before we get into the beers, I just want to give a little history of... The brewery and yes, tell us how we got to how we got these beers all the way down in Nashville, Tennessee, from again West Hartford, Connecticut. Thank you, Dave. Why do I feel like this is like table tennis commentary? Mm, you like smacking balls around? <laughs> okay, with paddles. <laughs> All right. Anyways, so I happened to go home and visit my family recently in Pennsylvania. What part? Northeast. What city? Wilkesbury. Woo woo, Wilkesbury. <laughs> and while I was driving up that way into the wide, wide world of snow, the Great White North. Yes, almost the Great White North. Um, I wanted to take a day trip into Massachusetts. And a special shout out to my new friend, Tim. Yay, Tim. Good job, buddy. Tim, if you're listening to this, you know who you are. He's, um, he's not. He might be. He's, he's not. He could be. No one is. Yes. <laughs> There's a couple listeners. No, we're not even going to listen to this once it's done. <laughs> So we I might. Kid ourselves. We might. Okay. Okay. So Let's I, pretend someone's going to listen. Okay. So, anyways, um, I met him at another great brewery, and <sighs> this one is in Massachusetts. Um, and while I was there, Tim mentioned to me that I should go to New Park uh, before I head home. In West. Hartford, Connecticut. Yes, yes, yes. So, in the midst of, you know, doing the family thing and the Christmas thing and, and all these other... Getting away from your family. Yes. And Let's getting, just say it. Okay. And getting away from my family for a little bit, I decided, well, you know what? Probably a good idea because it's in my uh, scope of visiting friends and family all over that area. I'm going to go. Plus, you like to drive. You're, I, you're a road tripper. I'm a driver. That I am. And especially when it comes to looking for good beer. That's right. And Tim couldn't steer me wrong. I mean, this guy knows his New England IPAs. And if he says his place is good, well, then it had to be good, right? It had to be good. Exactly. So I show up, and it's later in the night, and the place is packed. So first of all, this brewery has only been open since March 25th of 2017. Nice. Now, granted, it's taken them a couple years to get to the opening stage, but for them being under a year old, the place is packed. I mean, absolutely packed. And they probably even haven't even had to clean the bathrooms yet. 
I mean, if it's only been open since March. Uh, I think they've cleaned the bathrooms. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. They might even they might even have swept the floor a couple of times. Oh, nice. Yeah. Classy. It, it's very yeah, classy. Very, very classy, classy in Connecticut. So it's in this industrial area, and there's a lot of other like shops and things in the same building. But um, there was a really great <clears throat> funk band playing that night. And, of course, you know, food trucks galore. But the place was just absolutely packed. So I know what was the name of the band? Booyah, I think it was Booyah. called. Booyah. Hey, yeah, exactly. shout out to Booyah. Yeah. Get like, some. Really great band, too, by the way. But I was really intrigued by the beer list that they had. And um, they had this Berliner Weiss that, like, was flying out of the bar. Like, all the girls were drinking that that night. But... Mm-hmm. I wanted to go for the IPAs. So um, I was able to bring some back to Tennessee. And I'm really glad that I did. You said that was a boysenberry Berliner advice, though. Yes. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, just this really gorgeous, like, magenta-y colored beer. It was quite phenomenal. Because, I mean, we don't get, I don't think we get boysenberries down here, do we? I wouldn't think so. I don't know. But they have like a lot of really cool berries and stuff that grow up there. And it's cool how they utilize, you know, locally grown stuff. Sure, sure. Yeah. And also, um, they don't have a lot of information about themselves on their website. Um, just like what's on tap and, and who their food trucks are for the week, that kind of thing. But I was reading an article. Um, it was in the local police gazette, right? I mean, the police gazette. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so, dude. Um, I think the newspaper, maybe. And they were talking about the opening, but the West Hartford Chronicles. I think. I think. Um, I totally made that up. Did you? Yeah. Well, you might have been like spot on. Uh, I'm pretty good. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. But it's taken them a while to to get this thing up and running, right? They've been trying for about. Five years or something, they had to get some city ordinances changed on zonings, right? To be able to do that, which I mean, a lot of a lot of um, cities and towns are going through that right now. Yep. In this, you know, quest for craft beer, a lot of local hurdles have to be moved by craft brewers, and that really helps out other businesses that follow along. So, you know, shout out to craft brewers for changing local laws and stuff and making it easier for small businesses. Oh, yeah, totally. But um, also in this article, I mentioned that they were going to be part of a CSA program, which I thought was really rad. I mean, because, you know, you hear... Tell um, Community... Oh, crap. Crap, C. Okay, that's a C. Crap. <laughs> well... Community-sourced agriculture... Yeah, yeah, I think that's what it's... Dude, I totally nailed that. Yeah. I have no I idea think, how I remember that. I think, yeah, you did. But, like, it's in baskets, right? Like, it's a delivery thing. Yeah. Of local goods. Baskets or boxes or, you know, however it works. But you're using local produce, and um, in some cases, it's not just produce, but it could be meats and cheeses Bread. and breads. And then, in the case of this one, beer. Man, that is cool. Because you're getting, like, a whole meal. Exactly. Like, you're getting a party in a basket. What just waiting to happen. Or a bag. Yeah, or exactly. Um, that's pretty cool. Yeah. No, yeah, awesome. and speaking of which, they not only want to make IPAs, which that's what they're known for, but they want to do some barrel aging too. I don't know if they've started doing that yet since they no. just opened in March, but um, you know, I think that'll be a good way of showcasing some of their beers. I think at this point you have to do barrel aging. There's not any way around it. True. Whether it's like... like barrel aging as far as whiskey barrel stouts or sours sure funky stuff and being in that part of new england i mean i think that's a big part of their culture too is having you know barrel aged and cask ales and and One things big, like dark that. beers big strong oh, beers. yeah yeah no. to get through those cold, cold, cold nights winters. yeah yeah exactly so anyways i have to say that just based on that alone i was really impressed um, I'm impressed too. Yeah, by the diversity of the people that were there, and just the fact that a I found it, and b I was able to bring these puppies home in subarctic weather conditions, yep. and that it lasted the trip back to Nashville. There you go. So when we come back, we will talk about these beers.
Guys, your bathroom called. It's time to give it the cleaning it deserves. Get rid of all the junk you're not using that's laying around. Freshen up your morning routine with high-quality products from Dollar Shave Club. Members like me, well, we get everything we need for our morning routine delivered right to our door. I got to try out the Shit Shower and Shave Kit, but I didn't actually know the name at the time. Great stuff for 5 bucks. Nice blades, well-made handle, body wash, shave butter, and these towelettes. So I'm opening this up with the missus sitting beside me, and she's checking it out as well. And I ask her about the toilets, and she says, they're to clean your face with after shaving. See, since they have aloe vera in them. And I'm looking at the name thinking, One Wipe Charlie's. Hmm, okay. So I'm going through my normal shave routine and looking mighty fine, smelling good and smooth. And I finish my cheeks off with these wipes. And I notice they are not quite the texture I was expecting. Soft. Like, really soft. And then I discover the name of the kit. And with a bit more reading, uh, yep. Indeed, I've used these wipes on the wrong cheeks. Anyway, they are great when used properly. Clean up your bathroom and your morning routine. Join Dollar Shave Club today, and for just $5 with free shipping, you'll get the six-blade executive razors plus trial sizes of shave butter, body cleanser, and one-wipe Charlie's. You should try to use those properly as well. Then keep the blades coming for a few bucks more a month, Get yours at dollarshaveclub.com slash sips. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash S-I-P-S. Hey, everyone. Welcome back. Hey. Hey. So we're talking about, we're about to talk about three beers from New Park Brewing in West Hartford, Connecticut. West, West. And what's the first beer that we're going to talk about, good old boy Dave? Foliary Foliation? Yes, that's the one. I was saying that in a roundabout way. Foliation. Okay. Which means the art of foliating. Yeah. Like okay. a folio. Okay. So, foliation is a 5% American pale ale. Good old boy Dave, what are your thoughts on this beer? Well, I think, um, <clears throat> you know, you and I had kind of debated back and forth on this one a little bit. Not that either one of us didn't like it, because we both really do. It's very, very juicy, um, has nice tropical flavors, a little bit of pininess, uh, some sweetness, but it's, it's very easy drinking. It's just a little, um, on for your, for your taste, a little out of the box for an American pale ale. I think... I think it's kind of right on point myself, but I think we both agreed that it was good, though, right? Oh, I think it's it's great. It's just that it's a little sweet for me for what is considered an American pale, but I like their take on it. Yeah. You know? There is a little bit of um, almost a juicy fruitiness at the very at the back end of the flavor for me. So I will, I will say that there is that, but... I think part of that is is a lot of pale ales aren't as flavorful as this beer. Like they're packing a ton of stuff into five percent. They are. They are. And and I think that's what makes this really interesting is I, I mean this is very easy to drink. Yeah. Very, very easy. I think you could call this a session IPA almost. Yeah. And it's one of those murky things where you know, if a, if somebody has something they call a session IPA and it's really light on the flavor you might say, well, maybe they should call it a pale ale. But this one is kind of the opposite where it's 5%, but, man, there's a lot going on in this beer. And it's really cool and it's really juicy and good. Yeah. So, uh, But I, I think it's a pretty pretty spot-on beer myself. Yeah, and as it warms up, even more tropical fruits, more like... Melon. Um, there's like a lot of things going on in here. Yeah, but there's also this pininess to it, too. Um, and it's just, it's a nice, it's a nice blend. It's very smooth, very easy drinking. I, and then it has a nice, just not over the top bitterness that finishes it off. Mm -hmm. Not dry, but I would say medium dry finish. Yeah. It, this I think would be great in a can to have on the beach. Yep. You know, we like it in the can. We do. That we do. 
Uh, so what are we rating this beer? We are rating this beer a Sudge rating of four. <laughs> so then what's beer number two? Uh, oh, sorry. I, that was, <laughs> no, that was the sound effects, everybody. That wasn't me. The second beer is Hoppiary in 8% American Dippa, but it's got something special in it, doesn't it, Julie? Oh, yes. So besides having flaked oats in it, which, which is cool. Yeah, which is really cool and gives it this like really creamy mouthfeel. It also is made with clover honey. So what do you think of this one? So the honey is there. I can definitely tell it's there, but it's not like prominent you know it's 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 kind of there riding along in the background you know it's in the back seat it's hanging out but you know it's it you know it's there mm -hmm. um what i really like is the mouth feel from those oats because it really softens the whole beer and you get almost this stickiness so when you're tasting these really citrus and tropical hops that go along with it 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 increases the juiciness of the whole beer you know now i wouldn't call this a straight up new england ipa in my opinion because there is a, a a certain amount of bitterness there i don't know that's kind of a you know iffy thing to me but it's definitely juicy it's definitely got a nice rounded mouth feel so may, maybe it is i don't know maybe i'm just crazy maybe i'm just a little nuts you are a little nuts i really 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 enjoyed this one a lot and the aroma captured me at first yeah i mean the tropical fruitness i really it, it was like smelling like you were come like in an island you know what i mean yeah it just was it was almost overpowering but in a good way it just you know it, it just even your burps taste good with this beer i just noticed that that's so good well that's a good that's a good test you know yeah that's great <laughs> <laughs> it's work um but besides the tropicalness the creaminess on this just lends itself um to this to this nice balance i think and it doesn't drink like an eight percent beer no it like, doesn't i know we we say that all the time like oh this doesn't drink like a ten percent beer this doesn't but this uh you know this drinks like a you know like a seven point seven five percent of beer oh yeah <laughs> definitely sure. not eight though. sure but i think for I, I it's very approachable yeah okay and this yeah. is a beer you can get in trouble with i think that's one of the things you should say is this is a beer you could get in trouble with because you'd put two or three of these down before you were really thinking about it and the next thing you know you know you're kind of laying down yeah yeah true but i think a lot of women might like this too because it's complex, but it's not. It's not too dank. Like it's not a. That's com why women like me, because I'm pretty complex, but not too dank. <sighs> or is that the opposite? I'm pretty dank, but not too complex. <laughs> That's a whole other episode just waiting to happen. <laughs> but I just think it's very approachable and very easy to drink. The and again, I, I can't get over the creaminess on this because just for flaked yeah, the oats, the mouthfeel. I'm telling you is. And the like the slight stickiness yeah. that it leaves is that is the best part of this beer. I me. I think it is one of the best parts. Yeah. True. But very approachable um for women, I think, because I know I, I have a lot of friends that get really turned off when you hear the term IPA or double IPA. Hoppy. They just I don't like hops. Exa exactly. But for as hoppy as this puppy is, it is so smooth and so easy that yeah. I, I think it and very approachable. Just, there is a there is bitterness there, but it's not over the top. No, no, no. I mean it's very well measured. Yeah, it is. It is. It's a very well balanced beer. And what did we rate this? We rated this dog a four. <laughs> okay, so now for the last beer. What is it, good old boy Dave? I don't know. <laughs> this beer is called Laurel. It is another eight percent. American Double IPA. This one is brewed with honey malt and white wheat and um, has hints of orange juice, lychee, grapefruit, and pininess. What do you think about this beer, good old boy Dave? Definitely citrusy, a little bit of dankness. 
I think the white wheat and honey malt round it out a little bit, but it's not as soft as the other one. So there's definitely a distinction between the two beers. It's still really good, though. Oh, it's it's great. I mean, you get this slight honeyness um, with and still juicy, fruity, very, very juicy beer. But yet um, the pininess kind of balances it out. And yeah. I think for those people that like West Coast IPAs, they would really dig this one. Agreed. Um, you know, because it's, it's an homage almost to the West. But really, really approachable. Well, because um, it's from West Hartford. That's why. There you You're go. absolutely right. So what did we rate this beer? We rated it a sludge rating of four. <laughs> well, there you go. So, well, that's going to do it for us. Um, I think this was a great flight of New Park Brewing, don't you? And this was such an easy episode to cut. It was, yes. So we hope you enjoy this episode, and you can catch more episodes online, including our regular weekly show. I'd like to thank Dave for being here today with me. Hey, check out my 60-second beer reviews on Instagram, at good old boy Dave. This is good old gal Juliana asking you to join us again and keep on chuggling. This has been a one tan hand production of Sip Suds and Smokes, a program devoted to the appreciation of some of the finer slices of life. From the dude in the basement studios, your hosts, the good old boys, will see you all next time.